Okay, so we're going to start with the chord progression. So how do we transcribe chord progressions? Shape of You is perfect. Great. Stephen, glad, glad you're happy with this song. So to transcribe chord progressions, you have to focus on the bass line because the bass line virtually always plays the root of the chord above. And although, you know, we can talk about chord inversion, the fact is it's very rarely used. I would say that 99.999% of chords are played in root position. So it works very well to transcribe the bass line and have those bass notes tell you what the notes are above. So listen to the bass line, listen to my left hand. What do you think the starting note is? This is the starting note in the key of C minor, E flat major. Can you have a guess at what this note is? Emil has said C, that's absolutely correct. It's very common for bass lines to start on a C, David as well. C, C is the most, well the root of the scale is the most likely starting note. We're in C minor here. Anyone who's joining us, I'm transcribing this as though it's in C minor. So the most common starting note for a bass line is going to be C, the root. And the same almost applies for melodies, quite common for melodies to start on the root as well. Um, so this bass line, the first note is a C. Can you tell me what the next few notes are? Well, in this case, it jumps down by quite a big leap. And descending intervals, especially when they're a big leap, is probably the, harder ty the hardest type of interval to identify by ear. But if we just listen to, to the whole bass line, we don't actually have to figure out the descending interval. There's, there's another way to do this. Let's just skip the, the second note and go to these last two notes. What interval pattern is that? That's two whole steps. And in fact, this is one of the common shapes we looked at last time in our last live stream. It goes A, a flat, B flat, and C. This is a very common chord shape. This bass line pattern is very common. We looked at this last time, we looked at In the End by Linkin Park. And we looked at it in a, another song, I, I forget which one it was, but... So if we skip the first note when it goes down by the big leap, we can just tackle the end of this chord progression. We can spot this common shape, two whole steps in the bass line is almost always going to be these three chords. A flat major, oh yeah, it was Terminator. Paul White, yes, it was Terminator last time. So a lot of songs have this pattern in its bass line. In fact, I can guarantee the rest of today you will hear this bass line pattern quite a few times in, in songs. So we have the last three chords figured out, A flat major, B flat major, and it starts on C minor, because we know that C in the bass is going to be a C minor chord. So we just have one chord left. Instead of figuring it out as a descending interval, can you hear the interval that it goes up to the A flat? If we focus on this interval rather than the bigger interval, what interval is this? Da, da, da. 
That's a minor third. So what's a minor third below A flat? Minor third below A flat is going to be F. So that's the second note and F would indicate a what type of chord? Is it an F major or an F minor chord? Well in the key of C minor it would be F, A flat and C so it's going to be F minor the four chord. So we have the chords now C minor, F minor, A flat major and B flat major. And once you've figured out the chords, you have the chord progression for the whole song because this chord, this whole song just loops the same chord progression. So in some ways chord, chords are actually easier because once you've figured them out, it tends to just get repeated a lot. Now let's take a look at the melody. Let's just tackle the first, the first part. Can you hear a common shape in there? This was the common shape we looked at last time. In our key, if you hear a minor third with two whole steps, almost guaranteed to be one location in the scale. And this is the root, this is C. C, E flat, F, G. So this is, is one of the shapes from the pentatonic, uh, the pentatonic scale. This is C minor pentatonic scale. And this melody, I think, is entirely pentatonic. So it goes C, B flat, C. This is quite a big interval. Do we have to figure it out? Well, if you let the melody continue, keep playing, the melody actually bridges the gap between the two notes. So yes, it is a fifth Milo. It is a fifth, but you don't even have to really figure it out because the melody, if you let it just keep playing, it sort of bridges the gap between the two notes and you, you hear that it's this common shape one of the, probably the second most common shape of all time in a melody. You hear this all the time and Ed Sheeran here is just using this common shape. It's basically the notes C, E flat, F, G, and you can hear it just playing them in different patterns. So it goes C, B flat, C, G, F, 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 G, F, E flat, C, E flat, G, F, F, C, C, B flat, C, G, F, so it's just a pentatonic melody. Most melodies are pentatonic. And a lot of the common shapes are just little segments of the pentatonic scale. So we've now done the hard part. Once you've identified the first three or four notes, it tells you where you are within the key. And we can now just hear the melody play these over and over again. There'll be a lot of uh, repeated notes. I'm sorry, I didn't see the name, but someone just said Game of Thrones, yes. The soundtrack to the TV sh show Game of Thrones uses this common shape. A lot of songs use this shape, and in fact, when I was learning to play by ear, when I started spotting this shape, that's when transcribing started to click for me, because the vast majority of songs you do hear this shape at some point in them.
lot of uh, melodies. Can, can anyone else think of any songs that use this? Little section from Another One Bites The Dust. And these shapes can go either way, it can go up or down, or any different sort of uh, combination within, within, you know, you know, like, like this Ed Sheeran. Lots of different variations. Okay, uh, let's see how far we've got. We've basically done the hard work now, we're just gonna listen for repeated notes. And if we ever get lost, then just listen out for this common shape and it'll keep reminding you where the melody is within the key of C minor. How about this note? In C minor, which note is this? Yes, Movok, I think, is, is a B flat. That's correct. Well done, everyone. Because this is a pentatonic melody, it's using notes from C minor pentatonic scale. And a lot of melodies just use the pentatonic scale. A lot of melodies will just use these five notes. So when it goes up, it's not going to A flat because that would be quite unusual. It's going up to B flat because it's a pentatonic melody. Then we have repeated notes. B flat, G, G, F, E flat, C, F, F, G, F, E flat, C, E flat, G, F, F, C. And that's just our common shape. So really, we've basically transcribed this. In fact, I consider these three notes as a separate common shape. I actually call this common shape number one. E flat, F, G. A lot of songs just use these three notes. Three blind, blind Mice, a lot of country songs. Um, so that really I consider as a separate common shape is E flat, F and G. So in our major scale of E flat major, that would be the root, second and third. Or in the minor scale, if you're thinking from C minor's point of view, that's going to be the third, the fourth and the fifth. So that's the minor third, the fourth and the fifth. But in this case, we actually do get the full shape, the, the sort of second common shape, which is C, E flat, F, G. So we've now, we've now transcribed Ed Sheeran's shape of U. Sally Adams says that was surprisingly simple. It almost always is. When you find out the answer, it's really not that complicated. It's only complicated before it sort of clicks and you know, you're listening to music and you don't know what it is. It seems much more complicated than it actually is. But every time when you find out the answer, it's always quite a simple answer. It's usually the same four chords, if not six chords. Uh, being used over again from one song to the next, and it's the same few notes and melodic shapes. 
And often there's a lot of re repetition as well. So once you've figured out the first four or five notes, you're just going to hear those notes being repeated and repeated to different rhythms. And the same for the chords. Once you've figured out the chords, they just get repeated and repeated and repeated. Now, if you'd like to go more in depth into ear training, I'd like to invite you to sign up for my free video series on ear training. And in this series, I'll show you how my fixed key learning method works. So I'll show you how to line up songs in the same key so that you can spot the recurring shapes and chord progressions. And we'll look at interval recognition and I'll show you the six priority intervals that you have to learn to play most songs by ear. So you can sign up for free at themusicalear.com or just click on the link in the description.